This is Free Speech TV's Newswire, and here are some of the stories making headlines this week. I'm Antoinette June. Protesters in northern France gathered to protest the Group of Eight Summit this week. Jared Duquesne Mayor tells us more. About 100 protesters are already waiting day and night for the chance to show the world's major leaders that they should do a better job of sharing power. Protesters have set up camp in anticipation of the G8 summit taking place in the French city of Deville this week. The anti-G8 camp has all the necessary amenities, including a kitchen and a toilet. Protesters say they want to tell the world's leaders that no single country should hold the majority of power. We are here to offer other solutions, to offer another way of living together. It is possible to organize it so that everyone can make decisions and participate in the organization of their lives. About 6,000 people already took to the streets in protest last weekend. During the G8 summit, leaders from the United States, Britain, Canada, France, among others, will discuss ways to end the conflict in Libya. The summit could also be sidetracked, however, by discussions about who should be the new chief of the IMF. Not all global leaders want to see business as usual at the IMF. Marcy Miranda brings us more. The race is on. Contenders are beginning to throw their name into the race to become the next chief of the International Monetary Fund. All 187 IMF member countries will have the chance to nominate a potential leader. Speaking to a reporter in Paris, Chilean President Sebastián Pineda said his country hasn't picked a candidate yet. Pineda instead was critical of the IMF and said the world's focus should be on reforming an outdated institution. But I hope that this time we will be able to reach a very broad and strong agreement to nominate the next leader of the IMF. Because the question is not only who will lead, who will lead the IMF, the question is what is the IMF supposed to do? What do the IMF has to do now? Because the IMF that we have now is not the one that we need to face the challenges of the 21st century. The former IMF chief, Dominique Strauss-Kahn, resigned earlier this month to fight allegations of sexual assault. In Greece, more mass protests over government budget cuts. In this story, the role that Facebook is playing in the, deep, in the demonstrations. More than 10,000 citizens converged in Athens for a second day and stayed through the night Thursday to protest against tough new government austerity policies and public corruption. The demonstration was organized largely through a Facebook page dubbed Angry at Syntagma in reference to the city's central square across from the parliament building. The Greek government has imposed further cuts to wages, bonuses and pensions in an effort to dig itself out of an ongoing debt crisis and secure an international monetary fund bailout package. What makes protesters angriest is that they are paying to reduce the debt while wealthy and corrupt politicians are not being held accountable. We have reached a point that we do not have jobs, we have nothing, we have no money. I'm 22 years old and I have no idea what will happen in the future. Comprised largely of young people, the demonstrations mirror recent protests in Spain where tens of thousands have taken to the streets in recent weeks over the high unemployment rate and similar austerity cuts. We all need to get organized and show the government and the entire world that we care and that we are not passive receivers of all the things they are trying to push. And with tents and camping gear, it's clear that these protesters aren't planning on lifting the pressure from their political leaders anytime soon. Victims of some of the worst tornadoes in U.S. history are asking for federal help in the recovery, but their request is falling on deaf ears in Congress. Alexander Manis reports. It's been four days since a tornado ripped through this quiet Midwestern town, and residents say they're still far from being done picking up the pieces. On Sunday, a tornado cut a path of destruction through Joplin, Missouri. The storm killed at least 130 people and at least 232 additional residents remain missing. Since then, rescue workers have been busy trying to find victims trapped under the rubble of destroyed buildings. Senators from Missouri are asking the federal government for additional funds to help with the community's recovery. But the request comes at a time when House Republicans are slashing billions of dollars from disaster preparedness programs. Earlier this week, House Majority Leader Eric Cantor said that Congress has to first make cuts to other programs before approving federal funds for disaster relief in Missouri. 
In Michigan, Tea Party organizers called security on senior citizens who showed up to what they were told was an open town hall meeting. They had hoped to deliver a few choice words to Republican Representative Justin Amash about his plans to privatize Medicare. Tea Party organizers called in eight security officers to force six seniors and two reporters off the premises. Last weekend, thousands of people demonstrated at Michigan State Capitol. They were protesting Governor Snyder's budget cuts. On Thursday, the Michigan Senate approved $1 billion in cuts to public education. The Michigan Education Association said it intends to fight these cuts. Michigan has also slashed taxes on business and raised taxes on seniors and the working poor. The United States wastes 40 percent of the food it produces. This means that 40 percent of the labor, water and fuel we put into farming goes directly into the trash. Meanwhile, the city of Orlando has ruled that the group Food Not Bombs can only serve food to the poor and homeless two times a year. The group takes food from suppliers before it's thrown out, makes soup, and sets up literature tables. The group is concerned that the ruling comes at a time when hunger and poverty are increasing as military spending grows and public investment in social services, education, and health care are slashed. A new report shows how states can eliminate their budget deficits by swapping tax rates between the rich and poor. For example, in the state of Alaska, if you earn less than $22,000 a year, you currently pay 7% in taxes. If you earn above $108,000 a year, you only pay 2.6%. Under the new proposal, the rich and poor would swap places. That means if you earn above $108,000 a year, you would contribute what, you would pay, what the poor pay now, 7%. Under the current tax system, Alaska brings in $9.7 billion a year in revenues. But under the new proposal, the state would bring in over $17.5 billion. Alaska is currently facing a budget shortfall of about half a billion dollars. You can find your state's tax status at fareconomy.org. The New Jersey Supreme Court has ordered the state to restore $500 million in cuts to education. The court ruled that the state was failing its constitutional mandate to support all children. Governor Chris Christie had previously slashed funding for the state's most needy districts. The Minnesota House passed a bill that would put a constitutional ban on same-sex marriage on the ballot in 2012. Four Republicans broke with their party to vote against the bill, two Democrats joined with Republicans. Following the vote, opponents of the amendment launched a new group, Minnesotans United for All Families, with the hope of defeating the ballot measure in 2012. According to a new Gallup poll, a majority of Americans now support legalizing gay marriage. 53% of Americans say that same-sex marriage should come with the same rights as heterosexual marriage. Coming up next, Greenpeace finds dangerous radiation levels in fish off the coast of Japan, and Texas tells the Environmental Protection Agency that global warming poses no threat to public health.